welcome to another Michael's Guitar Reviews and today we have something very different, very unusual and very kindly uh, this has been possible because of uh, the efforts of Gemma who's the owner so thank you very much Gemma. Uh, this is a lovely uh, D Angelico Ludlow guitar. Um, quite something off the mainstream, off the beaten path but really really pretty. It's quite a heavy guitar, but it's very, very well balanced. There's no, no problem with, particularly with it leaning one way or another when it's on the thigh. It's a bit of a work of art. I mean, this is typical influence from the, the early days in New York when D'Angelico started up with mainly acoustic and arch top guitars, very high quality. But a lot of the style, if you like, remains in terms of things like this very very nicely made truss rod cover we have a dog by the way here don't worry about the dog uh, <laughs> uh, but beautifully sculpted headstock as well that is absolutely a work of art these uh, tuners are locking tuners as well so it's very easy once you've made your decision and you've got your guitar in tune to lock those up so they won't move the neck itself is a c profile neck all the way down, very comfortable, nothing bulky, nothing too thin, it's just a nice feel. And the fingerboard is, I think, either laurel or ebony. It's more likely to be laurel, but I'm not sure, not certain. The frets are very well cut, as is the nut. Everything's nicely made, it's some attention to detail. No sharp edges at all down the, down the fingerboard. And there's some really nice binding, quite tasteful there. And you can probably also see that there are some dot position markers on the side of the neck. Um, and really nice block mother of pearl on the fingerboard itself. Those are really tasteful, they look good. The neck itself is fixed to the body, so there's no bolt on here. This is quality. This is a guitar which is really well made. The shape of the guitar you'll see straight away is quite unusual. And, but surprisingly very comfortable to, to play. Also, access to the upper frets is very easy. Even though this cutaway intuitively looks like it's going the opposite way, there is still really good access to the upper frets. The body's sh uh, sculpted as well to give some comfort for the player. So you can just about see that there. And there's access at the back with a removable plate for the strings to go through and a service access point for the electronics if you need to do any work on there. The guitar has two humbucker pickups, but these Seymour Duncan pickups are, according to the manufacturers, not the standard type. These are upgraded ones, and they benefit from the facility of having a coil tap as well on the tone control, so you can raise and lower to change the sounds quite significantly. And each pickup has its own independent volume control. And there's also the traditional three-way selector up for the neck pickup, all the way down for the bridge pickup. And of course, in the center, that gives you the chance to blend everything, both in terms of volume and tone. So you get lots and lots of variety with this guitar. The finish of the guitar is lovely. It, this particular one's finished in a, an ivory color, with a very tasteful uh, dark rose-coloured um, escutcheon or scratch plate and that's nicely topped off with what appears to be gold plating on both the pickups and the rest of the hardware. The bridge itself is very familiar to people with um, American guitars uh, in that uh, each string saddle is independently adjustable. That's both in terms for height, if you want the action a little higher or lower, but also you can move these uh, individual saddles backwards and forwards to make sure that you get really accurate intonation. So overall, it's both a player's guitar and a guitar for somebody who likes one that looks really good and really different. So. What does it sound like? Well, let's try first of all just the neck pickup and we'll have the bassier tone selected on the rotary tone selector. That's anti-clockwise and at this position I've got the um, 
the, the coil tap pressed in towards the body. So we'll have a little strum with that, then we'll take the coil tap out and see what difference that makes. <laughs> Let's pull the coil tap out. We're still on the basier setting with the rotary selector switch, but the coil tap is now out. And let's go right the way around now in a clockwise direction to go for a more trebly sound, again with the coil tap in the pulled out position. Staying on the treble position, let's push the coil tap back in. Okay, moving all the way down now to the bridge pickup, and this time with the uh, rotary control on the bassier side with the coil tap pressed in. So bassier side, coil tap pressed in, but we're on the bridge pickup now. Okay, let's take the coil tap now and pull it all the way out. This is for the again for the bridge pickup and it's on the bassier setting anti-clockwise. Very nice. Pushing the coil tap back in and turning the rotary control for the bridge pickup all the way around to the treble side. This time with the coil tap out again on the bridge setting, bridge, bridge pickup, treble setting. <laughs> okay, now let's try blending those two pickups together. In this case, we've got both pickups on the treble setting with the uh, coil taps pressed inwards. Both pickups blended and this time with the coil taps both out on the treble setting. Treble setting with the coil taps both pressed in. This is the blended with both pickups now. So in summary, a wide range of sounds, a nicely balanced guitar, one that would win prizes for attractiveness and innovation and moving away from the normal mainstream of guitar appearances. This is a really nice guitar. I hope you've enjoyed this review. Um, again, Michael's Guitar Reviews. All your comments are always appreciated, constructive comments, and I would love you to subscribe and I'm really grateful to Gemma and the dogs for helping with this video. So thank you very much and I hope to see you again soon. Woof woof.
Oh my word.